So let's start with the panel discussion now. So oh, I'm uh, Vishy Pusla, and uh, first of all, thank you all for uh, coming to the panel. Uh, yeah, as I think you saw in one of the teaser mails, one of the many teaser mails that came out, uh, we'll also have some nice uh, surprise announcement at the end of uh, this panel, launching some, something that should be really exciting to uh, all of us here. So, I'm just curious, in, uh, in an entrepreneurial environment, when you say freedom, is it really a misnomer? Do we, do we really have the freedom to come up with a disruptive technology which will cannibalize ALE's own products? Do we have that freedom? I just want an opinion from the panel. Okay. When you talk about intrapreneurial, you're really talking about employees that get different ideas sometimes and try to do something that's probably not strategically aligned with the company. So from a company's point of view, and from Alcatel Lucent's point of view in particular, why should the company want to encourage such behavior? Any business of the world. Anything you would like to know about business, you should run through the time from here. But anybody would like to give a shot, let me, let me try to help you. I think we can Google this for a long time to be 10 different answers to this. But I do not believe in it, and I think you ask anybody who has thought through this, and I'm sure of you will agree. The business of any business in the long run is to make lives better. There is no business in the world which has sustained itself which does not make lives better. And innovation as a means of Sustaining itself in the longer run has always been the need. Only thing is today, the cycle has become a lot shorter. And all the companies must make sure that there's enough focus on that innovation piece. And we, whatever you call it, each employee in every company has the responsibility to make sure that we are thinking innovation. And that's extremely important. So, yes. I think there are different companies support the innovation structure in a different way. We are very happy that we have something called internal vouchers, and not many companies have that. There could be certain constraints that we could be making things better, etc. All that is fine. But Alpha Lucent supports it, I would say, in one of the better ways than most of the companies today are going to be seen. But it's not venture or bad labs or R&D. It does not mean that it's one set of people who has were tasked with innovation. It doesn't work like that. So, uh, the question is the same as what I asked Subhash, but why now? Is there a specific, you know, we could have done internal ventures 20 years ago, 10 years ago. Is there something that is changing in time, but also in geography? Is there a specific reason why we should think it's even more urgent to do entrepreneurial activities in India? Okay, okay. good afternoon, everyone. Let me. Uh, I'm going to start with the quote that I read in uh, India today recently. It said, um, moms previously used to say that my kids need to be an engineer or a doctor. Now they say my kid needs to own a company, then an engineer or a doctor. Okay? The, the whole cultural aspects of India has been shifting more and more away from just being an employee or employee you know, in a company or, or, or being a professional to owning a business, as being an entrepreneur or type of stuff. So to answer Vishesh's question, I have like four, four different aspects to it. One, uh, in, India was always entrepreneurial. There's no questions about it. It's in which field that was a question. I mean, we created the Green Revolution. We created the Milk Revolution. There are lots of different revolutions that were done in India over the period of time, which was the most critical need at the time. Okay? So right now, it's the high-tech revolution time for India. And there are four reasons for it. I think the first one is the information availability. With the amount of information about your products, the customers, the, the process, the technology, the competition, the problem statement, anything you need is available very freely, whether it's in a, in a magazine or whether it's on the internet or wherever they are. That makes anybody anywhere in the corner of the world to be able to be entrepreneurial to resolve the problem. Because most of the entrepreneurial work starts with the problem statement. Okay? So, so that's point number one. Point number two is the talent pool. I think India has one of the greatest talent pool, both from a knowledge-wise, from technical-wise, from the passion, from the, uh, from, the, uh, from the drive to succeed. From If you look at different aspects, from the age group-wise, one of the youngest age group population in the world, from different aspects of it, it's here now. I mean, this is the time to capture on that, right? The third thing is, one of the unique things that we have in India is the market. India is one of the most vibrant market right now in the world. 
that anything that you innovate, anything that you come up with, can be first tried in India. You don't have to go anywhere. Even though most of the things we innovate first gets picked up elsewhere, but, but we have a tremendous market. I mean, almost everywhere in the world, people are trying to do things to sell in India. Okay, so there's major... Well, uh, my, my, in my case, my day job was already about uh, doing something new and learning from it. So, so in my particular case, the, the, the motivation was to actually be able to go out in front of real users in a large scale and learn from it. So that was the biggest motivation to want to do a venture. Uh, Vishy, actually, uh, in the R&D, uh, we work a lot on boxes. We work on uh, routers, we work on RNCs, we work on network management boxes. So, we have actually a very good opportunity to think out of the box. <laughs> so, right? I think a lot of us would agree that uh, since we work a lot on boxes, we have a very good opportunity to think outside the box. So, jokes apart, I think what I am trying to say is that in R&D, we are actually in a very vantage position. Like, we are in a position to think out of the box. Why? Because, for example, if you look at customer, we can actually see the customer with, uh, at a good distance. Even though we may not be very near the customer, but we have an ability to go and poke the customer if needed. So, customer is one thing which we have actually a good foothold. And the question is very relevant. I think a lot more can be done. A lot has been tried to be done. And um, as I just want to add to what Hari said, uh, we have not only the opportunity, but also the need in R&D to innovate because today, what we see, what SEIs and CMMIs have taught us, we, we have to think differently, we have to do differently. What the, the, the overriding need is whatever can be done in five days, I need to do it in one day. And that is not because I'm brilliant. It's because I set a process, I write a tool, or I do something differently, such that that value can be shared across by more people. <laughs> Great to be back. Uh... For those who do not know me, I was here for 12 years, uh, joined in 98 and left three months ago. It was wonderful uh, shaping of my life and my career. I think maybe the little steps of entrepreneurial, which is a new word to me, <laughs> entrepreneurial spirit, I think, uh, which the company offered, right, you know, to take on new responsibilities and try out new things is what helped me jump out. But coming to Vishy's uh, <clears throat> question of social entrepreneurship, why social entrepreneurship and uh, why did I get into it? The answer is exactly what Subhashan Vishy said in the beginning. It's a passion and the belief that you can change the world and make lives better. Now that comes in different manifestations to different people. To Mark Zuckerberg, it comes in the thought of a Facebook. To multiple people, it comes in multiple ways. To me, it social reach in India has been a driving passion. And this has been there for many, many years. And entrepreneurship has been in my mind, and you know, very, very different from the blood which I carry, but the uh, spirit of entrepreneurship, the desire to be an entrepreneur has been there perhaps from my second year in C dot, you know, which is, you know, way back uh, 16, 17 years. So I think this was the only marriage which was possible for me to jump in with full passion, social entrepreneurship. I think the team, and just to say a little bit about, uh, uh, you know, one of the marks of an entre entrepreneur is the passion, right? He really sent me enough emails to say I need it spot to talk and tell people about how to do things inside this company. So, or how not. Uh, which the, just the founder or something, then it's not going to work out. Uh, often people miss out on the team part, but I would give it the highest rating. The second thing is the idea itself. Try the mom's test. That's what we tell. I mean, ask your mom that, okay, mom, I have an idea. Do, do you think it's going to work? If you're do we get intelligence built into our communication mechanism better? And the third one is think cloud. Cloud. Fourth one, which cuts across, is green. If uh, it's a pleasure, and I expect a big round of applause for all these people here who have been working on here, it's a pleasure to announce opening of the Idea Central 2011. We want ideas that are relevant to the company. We want ideas that could ultimately help the business units. That cannot happen without the business units supporting us. So this time, we are working hand in hand with the media, but 
you might need some guidelines. In the forum called BU Perspective, many of the representatives have started posting in it. So they would be posting uh, their pressing issues. They would uh, post uh, their thoughts on how the market is shaping up, how the trend is like. And uh, you can take those as inputs when you frame your idea. You might have an idea, and uh, there are multiple ways of shaping it. If there is a way you could shape it and personalize it to help a business unit, nothing like that. They are also judges of this contest. We are very serious about the kind of ideas that would get recognized. So we will have people who have the know-how. And third, yes, there is a forum. There will be many ideas. Who's watching it? Is it going to be tracked? So the business unit representatives would be tracking these ideas. And if they find an idea that is very relevant to them, they will adopt it. They might choose to fund it or they might reward that person. For an idea to culminate into something tangible, you, you need the support of top leadership. So we have an innovation board that has been set up uh, that involves uh, Munish Seth as well. The members of this innovation board are Munish Seth, Vishi Pusala, Subhash Bana, T.G. Shekhar, Madhu Kumar Krishnan, Srinivasan Sundararajan, Jatinder Singh, and Hari Warrior some ideas come to the last stage, there is always this question, what next? Yes, they, they, they won, but what next? Will the manager uh, give this person time? Uh, can this person really get that exposure in the, uh, in the venture board? So that's something they, they will take it up. And the third is the benefits should spill over beyond the winners on the, and the contest. When we plan this as, as the Idea Central team, this is a slogan, you know, that we thought through in every brainstorming session. How can we, you know, get this contest, touch everyone? It's not just about winners. It's, it's not just about, you know, uh, a good idea or a bad idea. So how do we touch them? And as I said before, the business units are involved. So even if uh, the idea doesn't get to the last stage, it doesn't mean that this idea will not gain recognition. The BU leaders are tracking it. It doesn't mean just ventures. It could be an idea that, is, uh, that helps a business leader and that is adopted by that person. So over time, I believe, you know, we, we get to that mindset and we start applying this process of ideating, of solving problems in our everyday job as well. So yes, today we are launching it. We launched that with a with a fun and education session. Till 28th February would be the idea submission process. We, we might extend it based on the feedbacks that we get, but yes, try to uh, see 28th February as the deadline for your 14th March, we will announce the top 15. March, there will be internal meetings with the judges. It, it would be uh, a five minutes or seven minutes elevator pitch where you would be asked to sell your idea, where you, you need to convince the judging panel. And then, uh, 16th March, we'll announce the top 10. The best part about being the top 10 is you would also receive help from the business modeling team uh, to how you could shape it up into a business case. So that's a training that I believe would be really helpful to you when, you, uh, when you're serious about starting your venture or starting something on your own. And uh, 24th March, we culminate with a grand finale how the idea central contest would end it is very clear it is all about idea central and uh, so that is the what about it why do you want to do it we talked in detail about the motivations the fact that your idea will go somewhere and it will change somebody's lives at least your lives is motivation enough if it gives you fun just go for it please come up post it bring the website down and we will have asim mohammed fix it for you you have all spent two hours here uh, listening very patiently. Thanks a lot for all your time. Thank you. Wonderful, Sudesh.